12, Notre Dame 10. We're in Todd's press box here. We, we got a bunch of fans here. Yeah. 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 Connor Kelly and, and uh, Shockey were the two stories today. Story of the Connor day. Kelly, 10 points. Shockey, I think, was about 15 for 20 in faceoff, somewhere around that. Your take on the game, Todd. Yeah, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. Connor Kelly, first turf I think they announced in 39 years to get 10 points in a game. Seven assists, three goals, just on fire. And, and Shockey just dominated the game at the X. And he's really coming on after the little bit of struggles in the first game. He's just come on like, a, like gangbusters. Our goalie expert, Mason, what do you think of Morris today? He's just really good when the ball comes near the crease. Some goals that you wouldn't like to see happen, but on the other side, Notre Dame's goal tending not up to par, nothing compared to what Dan Morris did. Connor. Morris, I thought, had that key save early in the game where he, he, he made a save, ball bounced rebound. out, and saved the rebound was just amazing. Look, Connor Kelly, three goals and seven assists. I think he's getting tired of all the talk about Nanakoke and about Connor Fields and every other great player on the cross. He is a great player. He showed it today against a great team. I think it's a big win for Maryland. You know, with, with Albany up next, you know, and that's Villanova after that. Villanova and then North Carolina. Every one of these wins in this gauntlet is going to be tough. They proved it today. The defense rose up uh, late, and I have to say that Tillman utilized that clock a little bit toward the end of the game. Yeah. He milked it. You know, I don't know what the record is, but when Maryland gets to 10 first, their record is absolutely incredible. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. They got to 10 first. They kind of held on, got a big goal from Logan Wisnowskis on an unbelievable pass by Kelly. Mason, talk about Kelly's halftime shot. It had to be from, what, 20 yards? Well, from 20 yards out on a turf field, the ball takes a different bounce than if you practice on grass. So for a goalie, you've never seen that shot. So when the ball comes up, then it goes, Top side on the cage, it's an impossible save. Yeah, and uh, we talked about was Naska's goal. He, he, they, 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 they t talked about how he was actually behind the goal line extended and used this the extent of his cross to to wrap around and get it to the top shelf. But how about Kelly corner. finding him with that? I mean, it was incredible. Some of, some of Kelly's finds were were just amazing. He had another cross court cross field pass that was astonishing. And when Kelly goes to the high, like the high point, okay, or he takes it from the top. He's so brilliant with the ball as a midi, and he just made things happen today. I get four or five goals were on his stick from passes that were just snowbirds for Bernhardt. I, it went on and on and on, and Maryland wins a game 12 and 10. They're now 5 and 0. Oh. And we got, the, we got the number one team in the country coming in next, next week. We can savor this for a day or two. Yeah, and then it's back to work. Back to work without question. Tell me about the women's game today, Todd. Uh, right now, women got off to a slow start. Uh, as we stood here, it was 11 to 4 at halftime. Um, uh, Rindy Griffin had a hat trick. Megan uh, Whittle has a couple of goals. Grace Griffin has a couple of goals. But uh, Terp's been a little sloppy and not a contest, little, though. A little, little inconsistent. Not a contest, but you know, Shannon Smith, who was uh, part of that Northwestern. One of Northwestern teams is the coach up at Hofstra now, and is bringing that program along. What time does the Maryland do the Maryland women play tonight? Uh, basketball. Basketball. They, they play a half an hour after the first game, which is I think at six thirty, so probably eight thirty, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock at Nebraska at, again. At Nebraska again for the third time in about three weeks. Yeah. And, uh, it was seven, seven points the first time, two points when they came to Xfinity Center. Let's hope Maryland can turn that direction around because Nebraska closed the gap a little bit. The key question is, Connie, is Mason, uh, is, is Wayne home yet? No. Still not home. He got stranded in New York. I made a beeline for the train station as soon as we lost. Bruce never Bruce never left Madison Square Garden and, uh, and never was and, outside and, and Penn Station. Never was outside. Never went outside. In and out. The, the perfect way to visit New York City. Never. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, Call Meyer Consulting Engineers. There's no way I'm going to mess up this day talking about that basketball game because it was it was too heartbreaking. 
and I see number four seed in the NIT. Does that sound right for the Terps? That's what I've heard. What you told me, the upset's on the way. I can see it happening. Depends on what the matchup is. Maryland could be an early exit, even in the NIT. I don't care. You know what? I want to play Oklahoma. <laughs> I want to play Trey Young. I think that would be something we're seeing. All right. I don't Oklahoma really think is going to be in the NIT, I think. Seven and ten in conference. I mean, who are they? You know, that's just my opinion. But anyway, twelve to ten Terps today. Would you pay Trey Young to see Trey? Oh, never mind. We won't get into that debate. You know, it's a, somebody on the station at one hundred five seven said they don't say that Oklahoma is facing Kansas. They say Trey Young and Oklahoma facing Kansas, and for that, Trey Young gets zippity doo dah. Another story for another day. Hey, great win for the Terps today. Shockey, I heard rumors about him being a notch below Baptiste. It's too early to say that. But when you dominate a game like this, you know, there's something to behold for that. We'll see next week. It's Shockey's first real test against TV Owen. And look, let's give Tillman credit. It's so smart to play Albany because you're going to see Natticook. And if you waited to the tournament to see Nanticoke, that's not good. So even if even if it's a tough game next week and they lose or whatever, Tillman will be ready for the second match like they were last year against Connor Fields and whatnot. Right. You but can watch it on film, but until you actually face it on the field, you don't know. You can't feel is. his force that's supposed to be unbelievable. And then we have a couple easy games after that against Villanova on the road. And, and, and then good Carolina, Carolina on the West Coast. And then the Big Ten starts. So we're signing off. Wayne, we miss you. Hope you did your good job. Our, our audience, thanks for sticking around. A lot of fun. Catch it on Turf Talk tonight. Good night, everybody.